Hey guys, Middle Jesus here, and today I'm back with a brand new game room tour. Now, when I say game room, it's actually an entire floor of my house. It's actually three different rooms and takes up about a thousand square feet. And it's been two years since I did my last game room tour, and in that time, a lot of things have changed, both big and small. So I'm very excited to bring you this updated video. I think you're gonna dig it. Let's take a look. We're gonna go ahead and start in the main room. And like I said, there's a lot of big things and small things that have changed in here. So that's primarily what I'm gonna focus on in this video. Starting with, you'll notice that I have three televisions in this particular area. I actually upgraded the larger television. You see the old one right here. I'm guessing that's probably 55 inches, but I upgraded to this 65 inch LG. This is a 4K television. And I did that because, well, I realize I have so much room on that wall for a larger television and I'm gaming so much down here anyways. Might as well make the jump. And honestly, I got a screaming deal on it. They're having a massive sale. So I, I jumped at the chance to upgrade that television. And then to the left of that, you'll notice that I have my old school flat screen CRT sitting there. And I moved it because frankly, I wanted easier access to it because I was using it more and more. It's such a great television. And another thing that convinced me is getting the Mister. So this is an amazing little device. And when it's plugged into an old school CRT, the games look incredible. They look like they are supposed to look. And so this was definitely a very good decision on my part. And speaking of this entertainment center here, a lot has changed in there specifically, well, new gaming consoles have come out. So you see that I have the PlayStation 5 right there. I have those custom red, I don't know what they call those things, like blades right there. So that's my PlayStation 5. And then right below that, I have the Xbox Series X. And both of these consoles look and play amazing on this big screen TV. Another thing that's changed in the last couple of years is all of the clone systems have come out. So you see a bunch of them right here, starting with some of the Hyperkin. Now, some of these I've had for a while. Some of them are a little bit on the newer side. These are the kind of older ones here. But then I have the Polymega and also all of its accessories that are currently available for it. This console gets a lot of use. I've mentioned that in the past. It's primarily for me used for all of the disc-based systems currently. That's the purpose that it really serves in my game room. So I have all the Sega CDs, Sega Saturn stuff on there, PlayStation 1 games. And uh, yeah, I, I dig it a lot. And of course, how can I not forget the analog clone systems that have come out, including the one for the NES, the Super NES, also the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive and their digital to audio converter right there, as well as the analog pocket, which is happily charging to the left of the screen there. I love that device. And to clarify, I still have all my original consoles and really nothing will truly replace those, especially when it comes to nostalgia. But I do appreciate how some of these clone systems give you HDMI out, 1080p video, and a bunch of other new features. To the left of there is something that has also changed in the last couple of years. And you will see that I have now three shelves of nothing but handhelds. I used to only have one shelf, but honestly, I have so many handhelds and I wanted to display them. So I put two more shelves up there to kind of give this history of gaming handhelds. And I just love how this looks. And part of the reason why this looks so cool is because of a website called rosecoloredgaming.com. I've been using their acrylic stands for years and all of them that you see here are from that website. I love that site. They do amazing work. And what I like about it is that they give you a bunch of variety. So you can get the clear ones if you wanna keep them somewhat subtle, but they also have some of the colored special edition ones if you have some special handhelds that you just wanna show off. And they've even got really obscure handhelds like, like the Sony Pocket Station. I was amazed to see that. So if you have a bunch of gaming handhelds and you're looking for a way to display them, check out Rose Colored Gaming. Now moving around the same area, you'll notice that I also have this third television there. It is a Vizio HD television. 
Now, <laughs> this one has a bit of a history with me because I originally got it from Kinsey, I think. I think she gave it to me. I used it in my old game room because I loved it because it has so many different connection types in the back. It's actually pretty amazing how many systems it supports. Then she took it back because she needed it in her bedroom. But now that she's moved to Japan, well, it's back in my game room. And so this is just one of, I think one of the more versatile HD televisions ever made. It's got every connection possible that you would ever want. So it's cool to have it in my game room. And to that point, underneath that TV, you'll see that there is a wide variety of consoles that are stored there and ready to be connected to it. But I wanted to highlight two of them that are fairly new to my collection. Starting with the Super Nintendo, although technically it's not new, I've had it for a while, but the translucent case definitely is. Cody at Pink Gorilla swapped out my old yellow case for this transparent one. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. And then I also got this Launch Team 2001 original Xbox. I love this thing because it has the signature from Bill Gates on there. And then some of you have noticed in our game pickups videos that I do with Reggie that the couch changed in here. Upstairs in our old living room, we had these really nice recliners that just weren't getting used in our new home. And so my wife convinced me, she's like, hey, you know, instead of selling these off or giving them to somebody else, why don't you use them down in the game room? And she was 100% right because they are so comfortable. And it's funny because as soon as I moved them down here, Susie started taking it over as her bed. So it's pretty funny, it's pretty cute. Every day she comes down and she crashes on them. So yep, they're, uh, they're pretty comfortable. Another big change that's happened in the last year is the way I store and display some of my loose cartridges. This is how this shelving unit used to look two years ago. And you'll notice that I have a bunch of loose NES cartridges, Super Nintendo cartridges, and a bunch of others. And this is how it looks now. So this is all thanks to a website called miniboxgaming.com. It's an Etsy store and what they do is create these custom boxes for you to put your loose cartridges in. And what I love about it is that they are just barely larger than the cartridge itself. So you can't put a manual or anything else in there. It's not meant to be that. It's meant to be for people like me who have a really large loose game collection, but want to kind of make it look better. And so uh, the guy that runs that website, he does an amazing job of recreating these boxes, but shrunk down so that you can basically fit more of them on a shelf. And as you can see, the quality is really good. So. This is a pretty nice solution for people like me. I love how these look. When people come over, they're always like really surprised to see these. They wonder what they are. And again, they're not gonna be for everybody because if you're going for a complete in box, of course, this isn't a solution. And you know, for me, I don't really care. I just like the way that they look. I think it looks a lot better in the game room. So I'm very happy with these. The other thing I've done over the last couple of years is try to decorate a little bit more, kind of fill it out and make it look a little bit more fun. If you watch the original game room tour I did two years ago, some of the walls are looking a little bare, you know? It was only two months after I'd moved in and I, you know, got the game room set up as quickly as possible, but I've really tried to take some time and put a little bit more personality in my game room. As you can see here, I have some of my favorite classic sports cars sitting there on a shelf. Uh, I've also got some 45s right there. Just kind of, again, jazzing up the place a little bit, giving it a little bit more personality. And of course, I still got that Marshall Amp refrigerator that I got at Costco. Everybody who comes over and checks out my game room loves this thing. It looks so authentic. I mentioned previously that when I moved into this house, I really invested in quite a few Philips Hue lights. And I love these lights. I loved them when I first installed them and set them up. And I've just been adding even more of them over, you know, a couple months here and there. You know, basically I'll find a part of the game room that maybe needs a little bit more lighting, maybe a little bit more backlighting. Now, Philip Hue lights are not cheap and there are probably other cheaper solutions out there. However, what I like about the lights is that once you get into their ecosystem and use their app and program them to do what you want, I really like them. So yeah, they're a little bit on the expensive side, but I think you get what you pay for in this case. Speaking of decorating, I do wanna point out this really cool piece right here. So this was sent to me by a guy named Brett 
who played the demo for this Babylon 5 game back at E3 in 1999. This game never came out, but yet he got the poster for it. So he actually donated it to this game room and I absolutely love it. So thank you so much, Brett. One of the best parts of buying this house and having this room down here for a game room was the inclusion of this built-in bar. This is something I never had before and I wasn't entirely sure how much I would use it when we first moved in, but I absolutely love it. I love it really for two reasons. The first being that it's really great when you have people over. I mean, people can be sitting in the other area playing games or they can be sitting at a bar talking and chilling, you know, having a beer, having some food. It's just really great for that. And to that point, notice that I have the Oculus Quest 2 set up here so anybody can walk up and just grab it and play some VR games. Or if arcade style games are more your speed, I have the Evercade Versus set up here and anybody can walk up and just grab a controller. And the other thing is for shooting YouTube videos. So it's just the perfect height for me to shoot all of that B-roll that I need when I need to show a, a box, a cartridge, or some sort of product. This, I have this whole bar right here and it's just so easy to shoot video with. And so as you can tell, this entire space is just so awesome, but this is only the first room of three. As we go down the hallway, this is another place where I wanted to kind of jazz things up a little bit because, you know, before it was just white walls and it's a fairly narrow hallway. So it's, you know, I can't really put shelving or anything like that up. Otherwise I'd whack my head on something, but I did want to decorate it a little bit. And you can see that I have here lots of posters and advertisements for some of my favorite bands. And then check out these two acrylic posters here. One of them for Fallout 4 and the other one for Doom. These used to be hanging at the Bethesda headquarters. How cool is that? Here I have my entire PSP collection. And last video, you guys thought that was so funny that I was shaming my PSP collection down the hallway in this, this I don't know, this little closet or whatever. But the truth is, is that the PSP is one of my larger collections of games. And so I really, I, it just seemed like a very natural place to put it. I mean, as you can see, it's almost overflowing. Like I've got stuff on top and most of the shelves are full. I'm going for a complete collection, so I do need the room to store them. So it's not because I don't like the PSP, far from it. It's just, it needs its own dedicated area. And speaking of closets, you see this one right here. This is one of many different storage closets in this hallway. Uh, but this one's really nice. I finally went in and organized it. As you can see here, it's just a mishmash of original boxes. There's a bunch of controllers in here. There's a bunch of grips for the Switch. A little bit of everything in here, really. This is kind of just sort of overflow from the, the main room. Oh yeah, and I should mention that many of you are like, well, you got a bar, do you have a bathroom? And yeah, one of these doors is actually the laundry room and a full bath. And for some reason there is a shower in here, which I have never used, but I guess it's nice, you know, if we needed to. Moving on to the second room here, this one hasn't changed too much since the original video. Uh, it's it's basically kind of like a storage room in here. And as you see, it's a, it's a mix of a bunch of big box PC games, a um, bunch of PSP movies in here, those UMD movies. I also have some music DVDs in here. I've been collecting those over the last couple of years. Every time I go into a half price books, I'll see if they have some new music concert DVDs that I want to pick up fairly cheap. On this bookshelf over here, I have a bunch of loose and boxed Atari 2600 games, as well as some Intellivision games. Maybe there's some ColecoVision games in there, as well as, I guess, just more random big box PC games. And as you can see, I've also decorated the room, well, starting with a bunch of Star Wars figures, both old and new, but also some game related ones. Got some Matrix, got some Kiss Ducks, and just a bunch of other cool stuff. This section right here is all magazines. Most of them are gaming. There are some music ones in there. And then there's a bunch of strategy guides as well. And then to the right of that are all of my music CDs. Now, I don't really play CDs very much. I mostly am a streaming guy or I play vinyl records, but I do have a decent selection of you know music CDs I just didn't ever want to get rid of. I do really dig these mini arcade machines that are from New Wave Toys. 
So you see Darth Vader and also Greedo playing some Dragon Slayer as well as some 1942. I think these are pretty cool. And then behind Vash the Stampede is yet another storage area in there. Oh man, yeah, this, it's a mess. It's, it's a total mess. If I ever have to find anything, it's like I have to pull all that crap out just to get something that's way down at the bottom. Moving on to the third room is what I call my office. That's where I edit all my videos as well as shoot you know, videos sometime. And this is another example of where I really wanted to, you know, kind of really rethink how it looks and feels in this room. So for the most part, the shelving is exactly the same, but I've definitely moved some games around and things like that. While the other room had a lot of big box PC games from say the 80s and into the 90s, this is mostly just big box PC games from the 90s to maybe 2005, something like that. And while I've had these MS-DOS and Windows machines sitting underneath the second table here for quite a while, they weren't actually set up and ready to be used. And so what I did was I dug out of storage that IBM flat screen CRT and hooked everything up. And so now at a moment's notice, I can very easily play either of these. And that's kind of what I wanted because unless things are easy to access, you know, you won't make the time. And so I didn't want that. I want to be able to walk in here and play some classic PC games. Speaking of which, over here, I am displaying three classic computers, including the original Commodore SX64. Next to that, the beautiful Apple Cube. And next to that, well, the original iMac. Right there's my main computer that I use for editing video. That's a 2019 Apple iMac. Oh yeah, and you're probably wondering, is that a Cyberpunk 2077 chair? Yes, it is. <laughs> Yeah, I needed a new chair and I was all about the hype for that game, so I bought it. And uh, yeah, you know, it's a nice chair. It actually looks pretty cool. I love the design on the back of it, but it's also a little embarrassing. I don't know, what do you guys think? I mean, the game definitely ended up redeeming itself, right? With patches, right? And as you can see, I started decorating my office area a little bit, bringing some personality in here and my love for fast cars. And so you see a bunch of die-cast replicas of Porsches, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, uh, geez, Corvettes, basically, you know, every exotic sports car that I love that I'll probably never be able to afford to own other than in this, you know, small form. But it's been really fun kind of collecting these over the years. For years, I've had a bunch of 45s and, you know, Truth be told, I don't have a jukebox, and so I don't really play 45s very often. So one of the things I started to do was basically use them as decoration, putting them on the walls. So you see a bunch of Iron Maiden 45s there. They actually re-released a bunch of these kind of collector versions of them. And so I don't have all of them. I'm missing probably two or three, but that's a good chunk of them right there. And then here you have more storage. This is where I keep a lot of box consoles. Some of the consoles are actually out. Some of them are in here. Um, th this is just a mishmash of monitors. There's a couple old PCs in here. I keep most of my power supplies and uh, you know video connection cables and adapters. There's a little bit of everything in here. So anyways, guys, that's a quick look at my game rooms or game floor for 2022. And as you can see, it's an ever evolving thing. And I've said it before in other game room tours, and I'll say it again here, that a lot of the things that are in my game room, you know, are because of viewers like you. You know, you've reached out to me over the last years or decades with donations or trades, or maybe you'll sell me something really cool. Maybe, you know, we'll do something at an expo. I mean, it's just so much of it is because of the awesome retro gaming community. And so I wanna thank you for that. I really, really appreciate it. And as you can see here, I mean, it's my favorite place in the whole world. I love it. And so thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.